Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome to a video. We don't do these a lot, but I never got the chance to actually get into this Julian Nagelsmann fallout because we had to rush off to the rant stream. So we're going to drop a video for you guys. So big up everybody that's locked in. Like, subscribe. Let me know all of your thoughts on Julian Nagelsmann turning down Chelsea. He's been rejected so many times, moving like a right swipe on Tinder. I think it's the right swipe. I haven't been on that shit app in ages. But yeah, big up everybody that's in here, though. Um, Julian Nagelsmann to Chelsea is dead. It is done. It is finished. It is over. Fabrizio Romano reported earlier today that Nagelsmann has now withdrawn from the race to become the new Chelsea head coach. And he has said that it looks like it's his final decision. The German coach is said to be no longer available after multiple round of talks, and Nagelsmann was the top candidate for the job. It's funny that we're seeing that, because now sources are coming out trying to say that he was never the big favourite, which I do feel like it's like Chelsea trying to talk down on the whole thing now that Nagelsmann doesn't want the Chelsea job, and we're trying to act like, oh, we were never interested anyway, and we never want him. No, bollocks to that. We wanted him, we didn't get him. Some of the excuses that I'm seeing is a madness. Apparently, age and inexperience was the reason why he was never a key favourite for us. But we're hearing that we had three-hour conversations with fucking Vincent Company. Vincent Company, if we want to talk about experience. But yeah, we're here chatting to Company for three hours. And this guy has had one year's worth of coaching in England. He's not even coached in the Premier League yet. And we're trying to bring him in. We're going to get into company in a little second. Because that's his own version of madness. Like, I don't know what we're doing with that one. But the main thing is that Julian Nagelsmann to Chelsea is off. From what we're reading, um, Melissa Reddy said Julian Nagelsmann felt there was fundamental, structural, recruitment and process decisions at Chelsea that wouldn't best serve his management. The club position is he wasn't the favourite for the job and there was mi mixed feelings for him. I don't believe that for a second because Vivelle, we already know, has been pushing for Nagelsmann for a minute now. That was the number one target. Julian Nagelsmann was the number one push for us. Enrique wasn't. Pochettino wasn't. Company wasn't. The one person we've been linked to clearly from the start was Enrique and Nagelsmann. And we knew Nagelsmann was being pushed by Vivelle. So the fact of the matter is, like, he's just rejected us. Probably because this whole process is taking ages and he wants his position to be verified already. Or he could have other clubs that are interested in him. PSG, potentially. Real Madrid, potentially. Clubs in a much better position than we are. Clubs that could potentially offer Champions League football too. And that makes sense as well. Or he's just decided we're just a shit show. And he's said, you know what? I don't want any of that. I don't want any of that. And regardless, wherever the situation is, fair play to him. It's a bit jarring that we're getting rejected everywhere. We've lost Enrique and Nagelsmann in the space of a week. That is mad. That is absolutely insane. But, hey. There's other, there's other managers out there. We're linked with Pochettino. I don't mind Pochettino joining us. I, I don't get the consensus against him. A lot of people just don't like him because he's ex-Tottenham. And it's like, and they're saying it's going to be a Benitez sort of situation if we end up getting Pochettino, which I don't understand. Um, Benitez slagged off Chelsea for years as Liverpool manager. Slagged off Mourinho for years as Chelsea manager. Even called Didier Drogba a diver and all sorts. He went against Chelsea multiple times as a Liverpool manager. Pochettino has just been the Tottenham manager. I, I don't see the problem. If anything, he's the only person that's made Tottenham look threatening. Because nobody else has done that. Even under the lights of Conte, Mourinho, I've never gone into a Chelsea-Tottenham game thinking, oh, crap, we've got Spurs. I've just thought, here we go, easy three points. Except for Poch. Poch's Spurs had me worried. 
I believe he can build the team. He knows what to do with young players. He did it with Southampton. He did it with Spurs. He can build an attacking side of play. He's good tactically. Has made it very hard for the likes of Pep, Sari, Conte, late stage Wenger to get results against him. Even took Tottenham, stinky Tottenham, to a UCL final. I don't think he's a bad manager. And I don't understand people going against him because it's like it's the same people that will say, oh, bring Harry Kane to Chelsea if we could. That would be the dream move for us. But he's Tottenham too. If Harry Kane is good enough for Chelsea, then why isn't Poch just because he's Tottenham? That doesn't make any sense to me. If Pochettino is available, bring him. Vincent Company, if he's available, do not bring him. Don't bring him. That's completely different. Do not do that. Company, he's doing well at, at Burnley. He's very impressive. It's like he's a, he's a disciple of Pep and all of that. But I think that's also why we're linked with him. This whole obsession with being like Arsenal and Arteta that we tried to replicate with Graham Potter, I believe we're trying to replicate again with Vincent Company. And it's just not going to work. It looks stupid doing that. You're going straight back to where we were at with Potter. An inexperienced manager that's done well with a team lower down than Chelsea, but hasn't really made the step up yet and doesn't really have the experience at the top level. You've just gone and done that again with company. The only difference is company's actually been at a top six side, but as a player, not as a manager. And that's different. Let but let um company go to England. Well, go to England. Let him go to the Premier League. Let him spend a year there with Burnley. Do your thing. Develop. See how you go after a season or two. If you have a good season, maybe you're worthy of a step up. As of right now, it's too early. I think even company would think that. I don't think he'll say no if the opportunity is there. But, like, I don't think it's the right move for either parties. All eyes point to Maurizio Pochettino being potentially the next Chelsea manager. And I don't see a problem with that. No one, I've not seen anyone give me a footballing reason as to why Pochettino shouldn't be seen, shouldn't be uh, looked at as a potential manager. It's all because of the Tottenham route. Oh, you're picking up Tottenham scraps and all of that. Tottenham have fallen off a cliff ever since they sacked him. He is a good manager. And like, I'm more than fine with Pochettino joining us. More than fine with it. So if Pochettino is going to be the guy, cool. Imagine imagine winning a trophy with Pochettino and being able to rub that in Tottenham's faces. I think that would be great, personally. So I'm all for it. If Pochettino is going to be the guy that we bring to Chelsea, let Pochettino be the guy that we bring to Chelsea. I am fine with it. I'm not fussed. I don't care. But yeah, it's been a very, very busy news day for Chelsea. Very busy news day. We'll be talking about this on stream again tomorrow. So don't forget to check that out as well, people. There was still a little bit on Mason Mount. He doesn't look like he's going to be re-signing. Um, he's had direct conversations with Liverpool. Liverpool declared interest in Mount. Apparently, they've agreed terms as well. Newcastle, Man City, Man United, Arsenal are all linked with Mason Mount's signature as well. I don't think he's going to re-sign. And we're apparently going to be looking to sell Cobham graduates anyway. So if Mason Mount's going to be the one that we sell, there you go. Thank you for the memories. Thank you for 2021 and everything. But please leave and take all of your simpy little fangirls with you. And hopefully our fan base will be a little bit more peaceful as a result. But yeah, I am not too fussed with Mason Mount leaving. And also the stuff about Mount turning his Twitter, I mean, leaving Twitter and everything, it's got nothing to do with abuse. It's either because of the blue tick being taken or it's because um, Mason Mount doesn't want to be there when all the news comes out about I'm going to another club and he's got to deal with all the shit on Twitter. That's it. That is literally it. That guy is not leaving because of abuse. If that was the case, Mason Mount would have left Twitter six months ago. He would have left a year ago. We don't even talk about Mason Mount that much on Twitter anymore because he barely plays. So you're not, you're not having fans being on there angry about the fact that you're seeing him in the lineup again or that he's playing like crap. No, he's not playing like crap. He's barely playing. It's as simple as that. So it's not that deep. Mason Mount, peace, adios, and take your fangirls with you. 
But yeah, guys, we are going to bounce because there's not really much else to talk about, though. But let me know what you guys are saying. If you guys like this sort of content, I will do more videos. I need to stop being a lazy bastard and actually just do more of this. So if you guys like content like this, let me know. Big up to everybody that's in here. Like, subscribe, and as always, up the chels.